So with the new It movie coming out in just a couple days, I figured I better do that video, I promised, where I answer your It questions. Cinder is out of town right now, so it's just gonna be me answering the questions, but I'm feeling pretty confident that I can give you guys a satisfying answer. The first question comes from Chloe Froud. She asks, do you think It will take the shape of other forms that weren't seen in the miniseries, such as Jaws? That's a good question, Chloe. Yes, I do think that we'll see It take other forms, but I'm not so sure about Jaws. I talked about this a little bit in my ideas for It at Halloween Horror Nights. Check that video out here if you haven't seen it. And basically what I said is that in the book and the miniseries, which take place in the 50s, It takes the form of some of the movie monsters from back then. The most notable one being Richie having an encounter with the Wolfman after going to see the Wolfman film in theaters and being afraid of it. Because It is constantly preying on the fears of its victims. So so my idea was that instead of using classic 50s horror icons is that this movie would use classic 80s horror icons like Freddy, Jason, Chucky, and Michael Myers. So to answer the part of your question about Jaws, I doubt that we'll see Jaws in this movie because that movie came out in 1975 so it would be more applicable to if this movie was taking place in the 70s as opposed to the 80s. Yes, it was still relevant in the 80s, but I just don't see a spot for Jaws to really appear in Derry. The only major body of water is the Kandusky Extreme and I think it would be a little bit silly for a shark to appear out of a stream. It could happen, but I think it's more likely that we'll see horror icons from the 80s in this film. Next question comes from Angelo Zarola. Are all of Pennywise's red balloons the dead children that he's eaten? Well, if you look at it in a literal sense, no. There is a separate physical manifestation of the dead children, which appears at the end of the story, which I'm not going to spoil right now for those who haven't seen the movie. But in a more symbolic sense, I would say, yes, they do represent the dead children, which is why Pennywise is always using the line, you'll float too, or you'll float down here, because each of Pennywise's victims does float. Again, I don't want to give it away. And I think the red balloons are kind of like a physical manifestation of that in the real world. So yes, the balloons do kind of represent his victims. Gavin K asks our next question, will the It movie be in two parts? Yes, it will. So the movie was originally supposed to come out as It Part 1, The Losers Club, and then at some point they simplified the title to just It, but it is still going to be a two-parter like the miniseries was, with the child portion taking place first and the adult portion taking place in Part 2. I think that the main difference between this movie and the miniseries is that in the miniseries it kind of sticks to the formula laid out by the book, where it actually starts with the Lucky Seven as adults being called back to their hometown to face it again based on the promise that that they made years ago. As each one of them is called back, they remember what happened to them in Derry and they have these flashbacks of their encounters with Pennywise as children. So it has kind of a non-linear story structure where it takes place in the present, but it has these flashbacks to their childhood memories in the past and we see how things unfolded. My prediction is that this new movie is not going to do that and it's just gonna tell the story in a linear fashion with the beginning starting at the very beginning of the child portion and part one stretching until that promise is made. And then part two will just cover their lives as adults and not include those flashbacks to their childhood. Maddie Plays asks, doesn't it live in the sewers? And that's a response to the video that I did showing the It Niebolt house and the hashtag that's where it lives, basically implying that it lives in 29 Niebolt. In the book, yes, it does live in the sewers. I think the best way for me to explain this is that the 29 Niebolt house is like its HQ up on the surface, whereas its true home is down in the sewers. We also see in the trailer and the it experience itself, which if you wanna check out that video, here is the link, that 29 Niebolt seems to be connected to the sewers. And there's a scene where they use a projector to line up the map of the sewers with the map of Derry and basically show that the sewer lines run right under the 29 Niebolt house. There's a scene in the book where they actually venture into 29 Niebolt and confront Pennywise and Pennywise actually retreats from there down into the sewers where they eventually go to have their final confrontation with him. So I would expect something similar here. Neasy Squad asks, do you think that this movie will be better than the TV series or will it be bad and horrible? Him, of course, referring to the 1990 TV miniseries starring Tim Curry. I have high hopes for this movie. I think with each trailer that's come out, I've gotten more excited for it. I've talked to a couple people who have seen the film and heard nothing but positive things so far, so I'm not really expecting a disappointment. Do I think it'll be better than the TV miniseries? 
Well, I think there's definitely a chance for it to be. The miniseries, in my opinion, is very good. I think this movie is going to do a lot of things that the miniseries just was not able to. I've talked about this a little bit in Things You've Missed, but one example is the inclusion of Patrick Hockstetter, who I'll just say is a character who does some extremely dark things in the book that couldn't be included in the miniseries. And I've heard that this new movie will just go to those darker places, will go to those more extreme lengths. And this is one of many examples in the book of just how dysfunctional this town of Derry is how all of the adults seem to be willing to turn a blind eye to the horrible things that are happening to these kids, and I hope that we can see more of that in this new movie. Now, will it live up to what we were given with the miniseries? Again, I think it'll be different, but I'm hoping with the increased budget and the R rating that it will live up to what we were given in 1990 and maybe even surpass it. And another thing is that part two will be very interesting because the best part of the miniseries is the child portion, and there's still a lot of things that I like about the adult portion. The very end ending not really being one of them, but if you ask pretty much anyone what their favorite part was, they're probably going to say part one. So what I'm most interested to see is how part two is going to compare to part two of the miniseries. I'm hoping that they might take it in a different direction and hopefully include the thing that happens after the ending of the miniseries that happens in the book. If you guys have read the book, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, next we're going to get into some spoiler questions. So if you haven't read the book, I recommend clicking away or pausing this video and reading the book. It's a long book. Mindblocks20 says, I think they'll have a spot where they show it as the spider creature. What do you think? Well, I think it's pretty unlikely that we'll see that in this film. I think if they do decide to go with the spider again, that it will be in part two. So do I think that it'll be in part two? Yes, I think that we'll see it, but I think they may shift away from that being like the final boss kind of thing. It's something that works a little bit better on paper, but I think it's just more fitting for the clown that terrorized them through this entire thing to be the final boss as opposed to this spider, which kind of comes out of nowhere. I do understand the reasoning for the spider, because the Lucky Seven, or what's left of them, come together and it is unable to find something that they're all afraid of, and this is really like the best form that it can manifest to face all of them at once. But with that being said, you want the end of the movie to be the climax, the scariest part. So I don't think that having a spider is really the best option. And this is also something that's touched on in the book. I forget who it was, but somebody is thinking that a spider is something that you might see crawling around in your kitchen. It's something that you experience in real life, whereas killer clowns are not, so that makes it a lot easier for them to face. I would like to see the spider form come up at some point during that confrontation in part two, but I don't think that it should be the final boss. Another clue towards the possible inclusion of the spider, again, I've talked about this before, but um, the Dark Tower movie. It may or may not have tie-ins with this IT movie. I know they're made by different studios, but there are a lot of Stephen King references in the Dark Tower movie, one of which being while they're at an abandoned amusement park, and they're sitting by the fire talking about the monsters that live in this outer realm that surrounds like their central universe. I forget what the exact term's for at all, but you're going to have to bear with me on that. And so he draws in the sand, he shows like their center universe, and he shows the creatures that are trying to get in from outside. And the creature that's used as an example is a tarantula, which crawls into the barrier and comes to where they are. So if the movies are connected, that could be some kind of foreshadowing for the fact that the spider creature will appear again. Sammy Saldana, do you know if Richie will die? Because in the trailer, it showed something like that. Um, in the book and in the miniseries, Richie does not die. He is one of the survivors and I can't really see them killing him off in this one. Like I said, I think the only two major differences are going to be the fact that this takes place in the 80s rather than the 50s and the non-linear story structure being shifted into a more linear one just focusing on the kids in part one. In any event, in this first movie, I can't really see any of the kids dying. We even see in the trailer the scene of the promise and they all seem to be present for that. So I think everybody at least makes it on to part two. Blitzen Benth asks, do you think Pennywise will reveal his true form? And there were a lot of questions about this asking, do you think that we'll see the spider? Do you think we'll see the true form? And in my mind, this is just a little bit different than the question about the spider because he could be referring to the deadlights as Pennywise's true form, not the spider. And of course, it's going to depend how you interpret it, but I see the deadlights as the true form of it, whereas Pennywise and the spider are just different manifestations, including some of the other ones that I talked about. So do I think that the deadlights are going to be in this movie? We haven't really seen any evidence of it in the trailer, but there is this one shot 
shot of Beverly being lifted up off of the ground, which could also tie into the phrase, you'll float too. And there seems to be like some kind of light shining on her. So I think that could be the work of the deadlights. And I do think that we'll see the deadlights make a return in this adaptation. So that just about covers the questions you guys asked on Twitter. I'm gonna be seeing this movie as early as possible and get cooking on hopefully a new episode of Things You Missed. So be on the lookout for that. Remember to subscribe to CZ's World for new horrors every week. Ring that death bell for notifications and I'll see you in the next one, assuming we both survive.